countdown. Oh, okay, we're ready to go. Go ahead and say your name and then the what the system is that we're here at today. Okay, I'm Bob Turner I'm with the Southeast Louisiana Flood Protection Authority East. Um, right now, we're standing um, on the sector gate for the uh, Lake Bourne Basin Lake Bourne Surge Barrier. Um, the Lake Bourne Surge Barrier is approximately two miles long. Uh, it was constructed by the Corps of Engineers at a cost of about $1.3 billion. Um, this this uh, structure uh, is about 12 miles from the heart of the city of New Orleans, and it stops the, the, the highest surge coming out of the Gulf of Mexico during a storm event. Uh, the top of the barrier is approximately 26 feet above sea level, um, and it's surrounded by flood walls that are approximately 30 feet above sea level. And the, the barrier is designed to stop surge, but also to allow surge to go over and be captured in the interior area? That's correct. Uh, the barrier is designed for um, a 100 year storm surge event uh, with a minimal amount of overtop overtopping. Uh, the amount of water that does come over the top of the barrier um, gets retained um, in the area between uh, the barrier and Seabrook and the locks at the, at the river. And so this, the interior portion of the Gulf Intercoastal Waterway and Inner Harbor Navigation Canal serves as a uh, retention basin during a surge event um, if needed. Uh, and uh, that's why we still have the, the smaller levees and flood walls inside of the system. They're no longer primary flood protection, uh, but they're still there so that as the, as the water builds up um, in, the, uh, in the Inner Harbor Navigation Canal and the Gulf Intercoastal Waterway, um, we expect it to come perhaps up to maybe six to eight feet uh, during a, a major event, uh, including rain, um, and the tops of those walls are about uh, 12 feet, so we still have a lot of room left on the inside. And uh, where we're standing now is uh, a, a gate on the Gulf Intercoastal Waterway, right? That's correct. Um, this is a sector gate. Um, it's uh, 152 feet wide, um, and this uh, allows access um, in and out of the, the protected area of the system uh, for marine traffic. Uh, typically, uh, this is left open, um, except for uh, when we have a storm approaching the area. And uh, we have a um, particular um, setup for closing this. And so when the, the surge here at the barrier gets to be about three to four feet, um, we, we close the sector gate, uh, as well as the other two gates on the barrier. And then uh, the last gate that we close uh, that's part of the same system is over at Seabrook. And there's a gate in the middle of the structure too? Yes, there's a lift gate uh, in the center, uh, not in the center, but uh, about two-thirds of the way across the barrier from, from this side. That's to allow um, commercial fishermen um, and small craft uh, inside and outside of the, uh, access to the system. Um, the gate uh, is about 52 feet wide. Uh, has about 35 foot clearance uh, during normal tide events and uh, we close that uh, about the same time that we would close the sector gate maybe just uh, a couple hours before. Thank you so much. Okay.